大家好，这里是听广播学英语频道。欧洲的战火还在延续，爱沙尼亚人担心，如果俄罗斯在乌克兰获胜，他们将是下一个被入侵的国家。许多爱沙尼亚人正在为最坏的情况做准备，并加入了志愿军事力量。尽管有北约的保护，但他们仍然担心战争会到来。这就是今天节目的主要内容。好了，我们要开始听了。Today on State of the World, invasion worries in Eastern Europe. Thanks for listening to State of the World from NPR. We bring you the day's most vital international stories up close, where they're happening. I'm Greg Dixon. Is Europe at risk of being engulfed by war? That's the view of some European nations bordering Russia. They're afraid that if Russia is successful in Ukraine, they'll be invaded next. Even though they're part of the NATO alliance, Estonia is an alliance member and a former Soviet republic. And PR's Philip Reeves talked to people there who are preparing for the worst. These days, this is where West meets East. A cold wind is racing across the fields from the nearby Baltic Sea. The Russian border is just a short ride down the road. I've come deep into the countryside in eastern Estonia. I'm surrounded by this. Flat farmland. I can see a pine forest on the horizon, dotting the landscape. There are these little wooden farms with stone barns. It's very beautiful and it's very tranquil. That's Uku. He's a weather-beaten man of 67. He doesn't want to give his full name for fear of reprisals. Uku's spending this afternoon pottering around his run-down homestead. He inherited this place from his grandfather and lives here alone. His is the kind of story you often hear in Estonia. He says when the Soviets occupied this country during the Second World War, they seized this land. Uku's father was sent to a prison in Siberia. God forbid this happens, but if the Russian military was to come here. Tomorrow, what would you personally do? I'd stay here, he says, and he adds, I'd fight. An Estonian flag flies defiantly from a pole in his yard. This talk of war may seem far-fetched. Estonia's been independent since the fall of the Soviet Union in 1991. It's in NATO and protected by its all-for-one clause, Article 5. Finland, a short trip across the sea from here, recently joined NATO. So did Sweden, giving the alliance control over the Baltic Sea. Yet Estonia is tiny, just twice the size of New Jersey. It has a long history of being invaded, especially by Russians. Our attitudes toward Russia are based on empirical experience, not、uh, any kind of、uh, hypothetical kumbaya, la la land ideas of what Russia is about, which is unfortunately the case with too many countries that have had no experience with Russian occupation. Tomas Endrikilves is a former president of Estonia. Mass deportations, rapes. Killings, tortures—you can go and see places where the Russians had torture chambers for Estonians. So, I mean, we've been there. We know what it's like. Vladimir Putin launched his all-out invasion of Ukraine just over two years ago. It began on the 24th of February. That happens to be Estonia's Independence Day, and、uh, well, like many thousands of families in Estonia, we were kind of waking up to start celebrating. You know, it's a big day for us Estonians when we got our independence back. Linda Lutz is 22. She's with a friend, Hannes Dinatonius, in a cafe in Estonia's capital, Tallinn. And I was just about to go out with my parents to to see our Estonian flag to be kind of risen up. Yeah, we have this tradition every single day with、yeah. the、uh, sunrise. They raise our flag、yes. with the anthem of Estonia. It's like、yes. a it's procedure. A big, <laughs> yes, it's a big procedure. And we were about to do that with my family, and suddenly, you know, we kind of all froze because, you know, there's the news that oh, Russia attacked Ukraine. It truly felt like kind of a personal attack on also Estonians because it was kind of like a warning, like, hey, you're never getting out of our control. You know, we can get to you if we want to. Lutz is in the process of joining Estonia's volunteer military force, the Defense League. You know, I want to be part of it. I am willing to fight for my country. 
It's my homeland. It's where I live. It's where I want to grow kids. This is where my best friends are. I mean, of course I'm willing to fight for this country. Indra Karola is a bartender in a Italian hotel. When he heard Russia had invaded Ukraine, he signed up for the Defence League right away. For my kids to live in free country. That's the main goal. Arula already has plans to get his family out of Estonia and away from danger if war comes here. Soon after Invasion Day, Ukrainian refugees started showing up in Tallinn, says Evelyn Kaldoya, a senior journalist with Estonia's Postimes newspaper. And you could see Ukrainian license plates and you could see uh, women only in the cars. And um, it was quite like, uh, you could sympathize with them. It was, uh, yeah. You could think that I could be the next day, I could be the same person. Putin has said the idea that Russia would invade a NATO country is nonsense. Some Western analysts tend to believe him. Estonia's Prime Minister, Kaja Kallis, is urging the world not to. In 1949, her mother, grandmother and great-grandmother were among more than 20,000 Estonians loaded into cattle trucks by the Soviets and deported to Siberia. This evil lives on in Russia... Kalis said in a recent speech about that atrocity. The question is, how many of her allies are listening? Former President Ilvis has his doubts. I think a number of countries in Europe are just uh, hoping all of this goes away so they can go back to getting cheap energy and uh, making a lot of money with Russia. is massive and we never... Politicians, diplomats and pundits gather in Tallinn for a roundtable discussion billed as a celebration of NATO's 75th anniversary. No one's in party mood. There's frustration about the lack of consensus in Europe and the US over their ultimate goal in Ukraine. Is it to prevent Russia achieving outright victory, laying the ground for negotiations, or outright victory for Ukraine? General Riho Teras is a former commander of Estonia's armed forces and a member of the European Parliament. It is clear that we have to define what is the end state we need to achieve. And then, from my opinion, is that uh, Russia has to lose the war in Ukraine. By lose, Taras means... Out of uh, territory of Ukraine, full stop. Many Estonians fear that if that doesn't happen, Putin could seek to test NATO and Article 5 by entering the Baltics, despite the risk of triggering nuclear war. The Allies must stand up to Russia says Marco Mikkelsen, chair of the Foreign Affairs Committee in Estonia's parliament. All of them. I don't believe that anybody in the United States who seriously is interested about national security of the United States can uh, say it is secure if Europe is not secure. Putin's aim is to divide Europeans and Americans and destroy NATO, says Mikkelsen. That makes Russia a global problem. Their aim is to destroy current world order to define new multipolarity in this world where the United States' dominance is gone. And together with China, they will define new rules for this world. Estonians are making their feelings clear outside the Russian embassy in Tallinn. There's a long railing absolutely covered with pictures, posters, condemning what Russia's doing in Ukraine, condemning the death of Alexei Navalny, the Russian opposition leader who died recently in prison. There are piles and piles of flowers. There are candles. There are notices calling for Russia to be held accountable. Even here, there are shades of grey. About a quarter of Estonia's population are ethnic Russians, many of whom moved here in Soviet times. They speak Russian and tend to live separately. When the war broke out, this segregation, it became basically a big problem. Sergei Metlev is editor-in-chief of the Russian edition of Postimes. Where you have one-third of local Russians who are pro-Putin, one-third who are neutral and don't want to do anything about this, and one-third who decided to uh, choose kind of, you know, this Western Estonian narrative. People basically were forced, in a way, to make decisions. Estonia's government's applying pressure. It's banned shows of support for Moscow, removed Soviet statues and deported pro-Putin activists. For some, all this talk of war is overwhelming. Mostly I'm worrying about surviving here, about what I'm going to eat in next month. Anton is 22. He doesn't want to give his full name for fear of reprisals. Half his family is in Russia. He lives in a village in eastern Estonia and says he's working three jobs to make ends meet. 
Anton says he and his friends have zero interest in taking up arms. Nobody will fight here because we don't have any any hope here. We just need to help our families. Yet most of this country would fight, says Metlev. We survived one Soviet occupation with huge losses for our country. Every fifth Estonia disappeared in Soviet gulag prison camps or fled Estonia. And there is no alternative reality for us besides fighting if there is a need to fight. As he potters around his yard in the biting wind, Uku is hoping that won't happen. Along this eastern frontier, there'll soon be hundreds of bunkers, which Estonia's building just in case. Here, history and the present are entwined. Putin wants to rebuild the old Russian Empire, says Uku, and if he's not stopped in Ukraine, we'll all have a problem. Philip Reeves, NPR News, Tallinn. That's the State of the World from NPR. Thank you for listening.